Joining us now from Washington is Washington Post White House reporter John Wagner. John, the White House communications director kept a low profile, but with him out now, who's calling the shots when it comes to messaging? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, there are quite a few moving parts here. It's not really clear uh, when uh, Dubke might get replaced. You might recall for the first month of the uh, administration, Sean Spicer, the White House press, uh, press secretary, was also playing the role of communications director. Uh, he's now uh, become a little bit more embattled, uh, to, to say the least. Um, I imagine he will fill some of that role, but they're also talking about bringing in uh, a handful of people who had been connected to the campaign, but it kind of drifted from Trump's orbit, uh, but who may be back. And they may be uh, some of the more combative campaign aides coming into the White House or playing roles uh, immediately adjacent to it. And we also know that, you know, there's a lot of talk about Kushner, who discussed setting up this back channel communications with Russia. So why now? Why do you think it is that they're launching the shakeup now? And how concerned are they about the impact of these uh, ongoing probes on Russia? Well, what people close to the president will tell you is even if these, uh, you know, all, all of this is not true about uh, any kind of collusion between the White House and Russia, they've, they, they've come to realize that this, there are going to be cascading stories for the foreseeable future, and they need to find some way to contain that and try to get on with the rest of their agenda. So the idea actually is to take a page uh, from the Clinton White House where they had a, a unit, uh, a crisis manage, uh, management unit, if you will, of lawyers and communication specialists who dealt with all the incoming on the Monica Lewinsky scandal and other crises. And that uh, allowed, at least in theory, for the, the other staffers to be freed up to, to push their agenda. You know, as we're hearing each day, there's something new, it seems like, as it relates to Jared Kushner. And CBS News it confirmed the, the back channel communications about Russia. But we've also heard on the other side, some say this is standard procedure for an administration. And then we've heard, well, it's standard procedure once that administration is underway. And that wasn't the case here. So what are the national, uh, national security concerns that we're looking at? Well, Trump administration officials have really tried to play that down. Over the weekend, you had uh, a, cu a couple folks on the talk shows saying that they don't consider this to be a big deal. Right. The, com the component of it that seems uh, fairly extraordinary is, at least you know, according to our reporting, is that uh, the Kushner and the, the Russians were contemplating using their communication system uh, for this back channel uh, talks. And, and, and that's something that's just not uh, really heard of. It's hard to ignore that the president retweeted a series of articles today that Kushner didn't suggest the Russian communications channel. What's the danger here with Trump now tweeting and trying to defend his son-in-law? Are they concerned at the White House about what might come forward just in maybe tweets alone? Well, our, our reporting has shown that there are people around Trump, including lawyers, who are suggesting that he lay off Twitter when it comes to anything having to do with Russia and the FBI investigation. Uh, the tweets today uh, would suggest he's not taking that advice. Um, and you're in an environment where, you know, anything you say becomes part of the record and it's, it's just hard to know down the road how that might factor in. What about Kushner himself? Obviously, we've seen a, a top Democrat already call for review of his security clearance. He's got a lot in his portfolio right now. What does the future hold in the next few weeks for him? Well, he does have an extraordinary portfolio. He's, you know, probably closer to the president uh, of anyone in the White House, so with the, the possible exception of uh, his daughter. Ivanka and Kushner's wife, um, but there and there are people within the White House who are counseling him to lay a little low, not go, you know, to play as much of a, a role as he has. But you know, the White House is pushing back against that, saying he's going to continue doing what he's been doing. Uh, I mean, he's an interesting figure for as influential as he is. We don't see a lot of him in the public eye, so I, I certainly wouldn't expect to see more of him. We know the president, in addition to those tweets about his son-in-law, he tweeted that the Senate should switch to 51 votes immediately to get health care and tax cuts approved. He, we know he's also threatened a government shutdown in the past. So how do you see any sort of legislation moving forward that the White House wants in the coming months? Is this really feasible? Well, they apparently are, are pretty concerned that they're going to head into the August recess in Congress without... Uh, any solid wins on the, the major legislative priorities of the president, tax cuts, health care, infrastructure. The, the tweet this, uh, earlier today was a little interesting, though. I mean, they're already trying to pass both uh, health care reform and tax cuts under a procedural uh, route in the, in the Senate that would allow just 51 votes. It's called rec budget reconciliation. 
So even changing the, the threshold wouldn't affect those two issues directly. And uh, Senate leaders have been very cool, even on the Republican side, the idea of changing that threshold for other legislation. And knowing that if the Democrats, so uh, at some point now take over and are the majority, that that obviously would help them on their side as well. Uh, conceivably, yes. The president tweeting a lot, actually, since he's been back from overseas, and he had one recently in response to Chancellor, Chancellor Merkel, excuse me, talking about the trade deficit for Germany and how much they pay NATO will change, was what he had to say. But Merkel has already come out and said that at this point, Germany needs to take care of itself. Europe needs to take care of itself. What are we looking at as far as relations between Europe, Germany specifically, maybe in the U.S.? Yeah, there certainly seems to be un an ongoing spat between uh, the leaders of the United States and Germany. Uh, Trump said, you know, several things uh, on his foreign trip that didn't sit well with Merkel, uh, including his refusal to guarantee that the United States will stay in the Paris Climate Accord. He uh, threw out a couple statements about how bad Germany is on trade. And then, of course, he gave his speech at the NATO headquarters uh, lambasting the other members or most of the other members for not uh, ponying up enough in defense spending. And John, we know that climate change is expected to come out this week, a decision by the president. Any word on where they're tilting? You know, there, there have been uh, kind of uh, conflicting signals on that, so I think we're going to have to wait and see. Um, you know, President Trump went into uh, the meetings over the, the trip, you know, kind of, well, actually, I mean, leaning against. So the fact that he's come out of this uh, wanting to wait to make a decision is perhaps somewhat indicative. But again, we're hearing conflicting things at this point. All right. John Wagner with The Washington Post. Thank you, John. Thank you.